It's all get crickets and crackers, isn't it? Mm, now we're going to keep on doing this, I guess. We're going to keep on letting people take advantage of us. Because we've either given up or we think we know so much that we know what's going on that we don't respond because we think we know we're, that that's not going to do any good. We've been here, coming here every year, uh, every year for 10 or so years to explain, yeah, there's a way that we have to do that. The very fact that you're feeling that explains that you're not in a free society. And they'll tell you the state's free. They'll say the people in it are not. In fact, they're not even talking to the people, but people think they are. So until we get our head wrapped up around this whole thing a lot better and realize we're born into a cage and we're going to have to figure our way out of it, or not, at that point, I don't even know what people complain about. I really don't. I look and say, if you're not really willing to step up, really understand what's, at least what I'm saying, what is the gripe? You're just a whiner, just a griper. And so, it's a plenary, hopefully, that we'll, we'll, we'll stand better for ourselves and we'll do things that we need to do to, to change things. And it's, to my mind, it's the, in my history uh, of doing, of researching and doing things, we can change a whole lot. We can do a whole lot pretty quickly. But we have to do it within a certain, a certain constraint. Why? Well, like I said, we live in a prison. We've been born into a prison. People want to think you're free, or they don't recognize that the term freedom actually means a constraint of your range of motion. And in some regard, is that so un unusual? You, you live in a society with other people. You're gonna, if you don't move out, you have to kind of conform to what other people expect as well. You're not the island of your mind. I mean, you could be, but it's not going to get you very far. And as I've found out, you can't you can't separate yourself, segregate yourself, and and isolate yourself. It seems that these these other crabs in the bucket want to pull you down, and everyone wants to be equally treated. And then you see that in your you see that in your civil rights. So I don't know what the big question is here. We're, we're in a prison. The civil rights is an exaction of every kind and no other. Uh, that's not my opinion. These are not just things I pull out of the air or other places. Go read the fact of it in Title Forty Two, Section Nineteen Eighty One. If you think you're going to get away from the imposition of all that, well, that's what you're griping about. And it's a, it's a, con it's really a continuum of how we are going to extract ourselves, really. And not everything is going to be so perfect, and certainly not. And why would we expect that from an occupying force anyway? They're not going to want us free. We're going to have to want ourselves free more than they want us captured. And there's a, there's a whole thing of a study about this in international law. And again, if I hadn't been through my path, I wouldn't really have these perceptions. I would have likely have the perceptions I see out in the majority of the people who, even the one, well, in the ones that think they know. Oh, I've read the Constitution, so I know what's supposed to be, and so that's the way the world ought to be. Not realizing that there's an international law that says that could be overthrown, and you better be aware of that. What's the Libra Code tell us? The same thing. It says you know you're not free when you're not free. It's indeed how it's in the occupier, uh, in the presence of the occupier. They don't even have to tell you. It says it right there in number one, Article Number One. And so we can make grand stories about what we think is supposed to be and how it's supposed to be. Here's this document, this parchment, uh, and, and, and it's not going to really get us anywhere. It, and it won't. It hasn't, and it won't. And so the, it's an uphill climb at this point, and we either decide to take it or, or we don't, and, and either we don't and be quiet like we maybe ought to be, given that we chose not to do anything. And this is a, really a lot of choices. Or we're just whiners. And until I can see some of the mechanisms and the the, ang the uh, answers I've seen that uh, work d destroyed in, in, the, in their efficacy. That I'm I'm holding to what I've researched. I'm holding to the path that I've uh, found, the things I've found on the path that I I went on, which encompassed a whole lot of stuff. I can't even begin to tell you what all that has been. It just brings me here today to talk about the things I do. And I'm hoping I'm inspiring a few people. And I, again, I, I, it's easy to get lulled into, well, yeah, what he says is the truth, and so we're done. And then kind of just sit there and complain. That's not what I'm asking everybody. Everybody. It's going to take all of us. You know, I keep referring to the, it's a republic if you can keep it. That's a, if I can say a truism, and this is the international law, that's, that tells you there's an occupier out there that's going to come and occupy you. I can't even say there's not even truth in the uh, dispute resolution stakeholder thing, because that, as I told you, as I can see and conceive of it, 
as we're told the stakeholder is, it's a it's like I like liken to Genghis Khan and his horde. And Genghis Khan and come knocking on your door and he tells you what Genghis Khan wants. And you're gonna have to deal with that. And that's sort of how this all works. In other words, we're not really living in peace. And it's all this law that we will destroy and deny. It's all improperly put on people, but we don't understand about that. But all that's there to try and constrain this whole problem. The the idea of nations is really this uh, uh, recognition that we're not a very good people. Peoples are just not very good. For as much as any one of us might be, what can I say? I mean, a peaceful in our own heart, in our mind, and in what we, our intentions are. The, the majority of the world apparently becomes... Uh, and, and raptured with the seven deadly sins, if you will. And we're told about that. So we can go ahead and deny all this. We can our, ourselves not participate, and it doesn't mean it doesn't start coming down. So rules have been made, and I'm not saying I'm embracing all these rules. I'm especially the ones in the last 40 years, with, which brought where the system itself, it was it's, it's an, uh, maybe an augmentation of when the people in power learned to tax peop, uh, tax everybody for their benefit, there's going to be no limit. It's the same thing, but on a different scale when we're looking at the things that I'm talking about relative to land, law, property rights, and all this other stuff, and this foreign imposition that came in, which we can identify. And I, I, I sort of stick there because it's easy, really easy to identify. If you, you don't have to make up a lot of stuff to identify the type of thing I'm saying. And I'm suggesting for, for us, if you can see that one, I can lead you to others. And it's not conjecture or opinion. It's there are others. There's other styles of of oppression, and they all really need to be dealt with. But what's interesting is when you get on the narrow path, they are all dealt with. Why? Because they're all beyond reason and law and morals, all of it. And, and so I, I try to come here to invoke in you a spirit beyond being the whiner or the complainer or just the one who thinks they, they observe or the documenter only that just uh, says, oh, this is what I see, and then that doesn't understand how to apply all this stuff. I guess that's the biggest thing I see. People I, I admire, almost like a, well, any of the people that I admire that are doing the research, if they're not turning that around and sitting back and saying, okay, now that I know this, where do I use it? There's, I don't know many people that will actually do that part, and that's the bulk of society. It won't, it won't sit with what it knows and what it believes it can prove in its path of learning and research, undoing whatever was on us, and and passed and through our our frailty and our own um, internal um, prejudices, looking through all that, coming up with a knowledge, and then a, not many will take and say, okay, how can I help someone by applying this? And so that's what I'm asking us to do. It takes a little bit more. There's more to it than what what even I'm saying. But, I mean, I'm trying to get you to the start where you start the proper, the more proper journey. And I don't know where all that's going to go. I just know it's going to be have to go better than different than where it, they're, they're leading us by the nose, as I keep saying. Before I forget, I, I do all the time. This is BTWRLM297. And I understand if I was uh, understanding in, in, the, in the chat last night on Real RLM, Real Liberty Media chat, maybe in the future we'll be putting in hashtag RLOG, and that might focus people uh, when you do searches on our on our broadcast for Real Liberty Media. You, you, maybe you'll get a lot, if, if there's a lot of people that do that, maybe you'll you'll find us easy, easy, easily through the noise. And so, uh, thank you, Vinny, for offering that. I, I don't know how much how well that works in the search engines, but it's something else. Like I tell you, put BTWRLM and the number gets you the broadcast through the search engines and through the filters. Uh, hopefully, uh, there's another one now. Hashtag R-L-O-G. I'll be putting that in my in my publications and all, and probably the tags. If, hopefully, I'll remember. And we'll try to make that a normalization so that it's easier for people to find uh, find this information in the noise of the internet. So I've been trying to suggest to you to all, uh, and to great, to great, uh, some somewhat of a great um, resistance that there's a law out there to follow, and uh, and 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 then people take it up and say, well, that's we've done that and it don't work. And I'm saying you're not listening to me because the law that I'm saying is to follow is the one that constrains the other side. And so 
there's a different approach. And as I talk with people behind the scenes, I notice uh, when we have a little bit of chance, if I can explain a little bit of the uh, the interpretations, it's it's a quickly gathered distinction that I'm making. It's a quickly understood change, and it kind of brings to light what's really supposed to happen here. And I, I can only nuggetize this to say, when I say go into a court and use an equity remedy of injunction, and you make sure you write your paper to get a default that takes out the judge and the system and the court because it's a matter of law default as a matter of law. I'm not saying engage the system. And so if you don't get what I just said, you need to go real look very carefully at what that remedy does and why I'm saying it has to go to a certain place and and, and do a certain thing. And you take it out of all these control that that takes it out of the control system. Now, when you do that, you have a different problem that develops, but that's not the point. You've got to get on the path and start the journey and see your sights. You can't just say, oh, well, it's a problem and don't do it. Get yourself to that problem, and then we'll look at it. Then we'll look at it again. In the meantime, people like myself are, are, are chewing away at that problem. And so you won't be alone when you get there either, at least from my perspective. And I'm asking you again, just engage this thing, use the occupier's language, Learn the, learn a foreign language. It is a foreign law. It's just a thing called legal. It's not so bad in lots in lots of places. It's only bad when that when that thing out there called government and those people in it use it against us. And then when we look very carefully, it's completely outside of its actual authority. And until we as a people understand that distinction and that and that that limit and actually articulate that back correctly, as I give you plenty of examples. And I, I reference the minors because we have a regulatory condition that can be placed on a minor who has a property right in the land exclusive to that gr gr uh, grantee uh, that is imposed upon him, which is just as wrong as any of the other things I see in society. So I can relate this to a very simple condition that I can show you the example for that you can then just take and extrapolate that around uh, wherever subject matter that you talk. And so I speak through the mining law a bit, quite a bit. And it's only an example. But it's, it's principles and it's, it's a dealing with administration, bureau, bureau rats, and all this other nonsense that's coming on us is going to be identical, uh, absolutely identical. And so I say you get down the path. Once you learn the, this narrow path and you see where all the uh, criminals are off the side of the road, you're going to be able to address those. It doesn't matter where they come from. That path is still an objective basis, and that path, Given you on the right one for you and what you're doing it is a shield as well. Now that said, there's criminals in the world, and so that's a, but that's a different problem. Get yourself on the path first. Get exercising your rights in the proper way, and you speak the language that the occupier is bound to. And so, what have I been saying? I've been bringing up all these things. Look, be careful what you're handed. You're going to be given a whole lot of. Uh, a lot of things to accept and choose into. Uh, we're, we're advised in the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars document. You're going to be a, given a place to plug in. You will. Your nature will m almost drive you to plug yourself in, and, and that's going to be the biggest uh, probably obstacle to your to this is you not wanting to plug into a system. And the way you are able to avoid that is you're able to understand the language of the system you're trying to plug into, even if they're not going to explain it to you. So it's always a responsibility of ours to do that for ourselves. And if you're doing it correctly, you can be an example to others if they don't really have an answer. And I don't say that because you're doing something for yourself, you will be an example. I see lots of bad examples. I see a lot of examples that don't quite meet what they ought to be doing, and they're just lucky they aren't more in trouble. Now, as you hear me talk about a lot here, I'm not here to get people into, I'm not here to get people in trouble, that's for sure. And so, anyway, it's, a, it's an analysis that you do. Learn to discern. You go through, I say, go read the black and white. Learn the rule that you're going to go into that's affecting you if you don't anyway. This is what people, I don't think, get. And so let's get onto the tabs here. I, mean, I was looking. I've already built up 60-plus tabs on top of the tabs I put for this broadcast, the information I can't get to. And I was trying to think, how do I get to that? I said before, well, I may have to have extra broadcasts just to get through the tabs, because I think it's information you need to know. And then I started thinking about that. 60 tabs. Even if I did a tab sprint, 
and I did a tab a minute. And I just went through and explained a minute's worth of things in that tab. It would still be an hour show just to get through the tabs that are residual on the broadcast I'm doing today. So um, I had a little bit of a slump shoulder moment. The reality of the amount of information that's out there is, again, so much. I don't. There's really no excuse that we aren't seeing it. But the amount of information to properly understand is immense. Um, and I can only do what part I can do here. And so uh, my the way I've set things up, has worked. You hear me come. I'm able to come every year, every week, and I'm able to put what I can put out. And it's just uh, what's out there to speak about and how and everything is is twice as much as what I can get to in a broadcast. And I'm even doing, a, as you know, a summary approach. So I may or may not be able to get to all those extra tabs, and I'm not going to do it by telling you about it. So we're going to move on here and see if we can, what we can, uh, what damage we can do to the news and notice to us today. I've been telling you about this uh, blockchain issue. Just a little bit to touch base. I don't want to. I, I think it's a good idea uh, in one regard, but the where it's going to go, where we're told it's going to go, the future that they want for us to tap into is not going to be a future for us. And so I've said, you know, this thing has to be privatized. Don't try to seek all this, all of this um, uh, registration and stuff. As we see, we can clearly see that's not a, a thing. But that that's not a common idea for everybody either. But blockchain now, I've been kind of critical of a couple of articles, and I mentioned last time I talked about uh, this thing. I said, well, you know. People are giving over big fine money before they even do the due process that's available within the law. If they just read that or their attorneys just read that, uh, they wouldn't be paying up the money for sure up front. And the court came back and essentially said that. If you, there's SEC, SEC, Sierra Echo Charlie, SEC has a, hasn't done enough to identify the subject liability. And so this is a new article shows up just to point us out, and I'm going to move. I'm not going to talk more about this than I'm into the process side of people fail to understand their due process for, uh, rights they have, the limitation on government before it can act. It, people will be destroyed by all this stuff and have been. And it's, here's the here's the here's another thing. All I'm going to read is the first paragraph. It's consistent with what I've been saying. The author finally comes to the point. It'll explain to you how there are some people, in fact, using lawyers who read the law and, this, and the complexities of uh, securities law who have understood to do what? Go read the law. And here it is. It's been, along, uh, been there along. It's been there all along, right under our noses, writes this author. The same author I wrote at uh, Twitter and said, you need to go to due process. You need to see whether or not these people need to be our, our known subject where the court said that the SEC hasn't done enough in making them subject before a due process hearing. Here, this author now, same author now comes this time, and I'm not saying that they're listening to me. I'm saying with any study, you start to come up to the point. And how this communication system works and how you're going to learn and stay within the realm so that you can function within the occupations, even so. It's been there all along, right under our noses. The secret to raising money through an ICO without ending up on the wrong side of an SEC enforcement letter. Follow the law. And so this is what I've been saying. That's all I'm going to read on this. You'll read that article. You'll understand how they're doing this or what's being purported to be done. I say, quit. watch. There's a couple things I noticed that were a little off, but that nothing to stop this idea here. There is a monster and a beast and a machine and a rendering machine out there called government. And it has set up some rules that you live under. And if you're going to get into these subject matter areas, you better know it's communication. This finally comes to the point. Go read the law and set yourself up in a way where the SEC can't touch you, is what I read. Put yourself in a place that they're, you're immune to it. And I say, poof, at that point, poof, the government is gone. Subject to some extraneous action by a bureau rat. But for the most part, the government disappears. If you stay within the constraints that law. In other words, that law exposes the expanse of the uh, the SEC's jurisdiction. And when you go do something, you do it just outside of there. That's not even a loophole. That's establishing and constructing a, a tool of whatever you want to do that's just not within their their state, if you could say it that way. A loophole would be someone subject inside that does things that are acknowledged as ex exceptions to uh, subjectivity, and so just uh, the eventually you're going to come to this point. There's a communication that you do. It's in the objective basis. That objective basis is actually a protection. 
if you're going to get into this type of thing, you're going to have to know what that is. You don't need to really need an attorney like they're showing here to do it. I've told you that. I've explained how this was going to come down. Here they come. Somebody is a group of people is already doing that. They're working it through that they are staying without, without, outside of the jurisdiction. At least that there's no no notice that they've been uh, that they've been wrong. I guess I can say it that way. And as I was telling you, if there is that notice, that's your due process. You broke through that. But you hold the government to that objective basis called the law, what they call the law, the statutes, the code. And so just another reference here, right off the bat, what I've been suggesting to you, demanding your rights, demanding the constraint of the government, it's done in a certain way. In this case, it's simply follow the law. You don't even know, I don't even know what that is relative to SEC and crypto ICOs and all that. The point is, that's where they're going. And they're not, this group of people is finding zero problem. In fact, they are now becoming that example, I'm telling, I tell you, you become for those of that way, that path. So I just wanted to point that out. It's not a, not, not that difficult actually. And you finally come to it. All these people that are so intelligent, they finally figure out, they're not talking about this being in the constraint in the context of an occupation. So, and I don't have to talk about that, but that's why the, that you have to go to this communication system because you're not free. I know that just shocked a couple people. You think you are, but but you're not. Well, you're free again. You're freedom. You have a range of motion. You've been gave. In fact, this rule of limitation will tell you that that's the limit and that's the free range that you have to move in. I'm saying you don't make sure, you make sure you don't get inside that limitation. You stay just outside of it. And here was evidence that that's possible, even in this newfangled thing called a cryptocurrency. So that's one way to address this. Another way is what we've been seeing that's coming down, which I told you again and again. A lot of this is repeating, pointing out I've said some things in the past, and, and you're going to have to recognize these things as you go forward and into the future, given you do anything, uh, given you're not the cricket. And we found out in the RLM chat, uh, that the uh, in the uh, the game that's played right before the broadcast, this broadcast on Grimner's uh, Blues and Rock Show, uh, that uh, if you are a cricket, the best action you're going to get is 24. Uh, you're only going to move 24 inches if you decide to act. When you stop your little noise making and you jump, it's going to be best is 24 inches. So that's not going to get us anywhere. Oh yeah, you could repeatedly jump 24 inches, but okay, who cares? So I'm asking us not to be that cricket. Uh, I'm asking us to take action. But I've also said in the United States, be careful if you take the action like we see in France because that action will be subverted. And sure enough, not even the next week we get the proof of that in an article. Well, France's yellow vests take a left turn. And so I said in, in the United States, it's already set up before you even get there, that if you can't protect against this infiltration, that your your movement, if you will, your action in the streets will be subverted. And it's happening in France. They're not actually protecting themselves so so well. It doesn't mean that they're done. It doesn't mean that they're defeated. Your message will, get, your action will be confused and maybe diffused and then distracted and then dissolved. And so you have to be careful uh, about this infiltration. I told you it would be coming. It would be in the United States of America. Why I've decided to choose to do way out of the direction I've been going which is to internalize your activity. Go, guerrilla tactics inside the system is essentially what it is. And no, I just said inside the system. Oh, see, you're using it. No, it's you got to get inside the system. It's not that you are in the system. It's not that you're using that system. You're actually using functions of that system against itself. But you're doing it as, as guerrilla tactics inside, and maybe not so much guerrilla ta ta tactics as the, the vigilant mass in opposition to a, a government gone mad. And if you don't, they, the, 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 the crazies run the asylum. It's just as simple. The cockistocracy rules the day. And so that's all I need to say on that. The left, political left, may be taking over. And then we get into the uh, extremist anarchists. Where they're, that's why a lot of the places are building. The buildings are burning and cars are burning. Uh, they take over your message. I'm not saying to not do this. I'm saying that you have to put that in the calculation if this is the action you're going to take. 
you know, in France or in Europe, they have a better, but they can get tens of thousands of people out, so they have a better chance to do this. I don't think you can get tens of people out in anything in the United States of America. Oh, we've heard about the Million Man March and the Million Woman this and then that's that and the other. And all that happens there is the same controlled opposition. As I pointed out years and years ago, you go to the steps, you talk to Dick Dar you have Dick Darmy talking to you, and then you don't pass him by as an irrelevancy and walk into Congress and say, here, this is a million people need you to know and do this. No, we go to listen to Dick Army. He tells us to go, that he's, he's doing it for us, and we turn around and walk away. And so it's not we don't have a mindset in America to do the mass riot. Those are those are uh, the mass the amassing of people for a function. We can do it in small amounts. We don't do it like the numbers, and that then gets subverted. In fact, the subversion almost leads in America. And so uh, you can take a different view on that. That's fine. Uh, it's, it's, for me, it's a decision I've made after doing it a bit and seeing the response to being out in the streets and doing things. It didn't get the response. It, it has a function, but it didn't get the response for what I wanted to see done, what the group of people that I was involved in wanted to see done. And certainly past that, it hasn't done anything. And so we all, again, you make your choices. And I'm saying don't not do it because I'm saying if you need to go find out what it is to get in the streets and do that, go do it. It's very valuable information. There's always something you'll learn by whatever you do. And so the, le the left may be taking over this, uh, what began as a resistance to essentially globalism, sustained debt. What we hear and read and I've read it behind uh, the woodshed uh, agenda 2030 as they're telling us the next goal set is. But it's a sustainable development. Sustainable means everybody's equal globally, and they're and it's on. And you realize that when you see it, it's an austerity, and they treat you like herd animals to make that so. Which is what the wars are. Uh, one of the reasons for the wars is to make migration like herd animals, and you will herd like an animal. There's just really not much you can do when everything's stripped from you. And so we don't want to get ourselves into that because we're dysfunctional, it's like not having your health as well. Uh, but anyway, the next point here is how long it takes to get through. I couldn't get these through these things in a minute, could I? Uh, so that somebody will infiltrate a, a function. You have to figure that out. When you want to start doing something, consider that. It's now a part of the news now that it's happening in France. I told you I hope, well, I told you last week, I hope that the, the uh, global uh, statement uh, from the UN, the policies that are being presented, will make it and rise to the top. I, asked, I told you that loud. My, my concern was that it wouldn't. This type of a, of a political left turn would subvert that. And it, you would see why. You know exactly why. So which means you can kind of imply, it almost implies who's paying for that. It's not the people. And so we've got to put that in your calculus of uh, figuring out how effective, well, what you're going to do, how effective will it be. And it's uh, attack services. We get attack services in this digital age. The, the, we have attack services in whatever we do. And that, for me, is important. I always do the, and I don't know if I'm so good at it, but I do my basic analysis. It's one of the reasons I've told you, I've told you the story about the Forest Service guy I finally met, uh, writing letters to telling them how they don't have any jurisdiction. They were trying to figure out, maneuver a way to try and make us, um, make us liable in our mine claim. Uh, they never did it, but they were looking to put external power on us, a pressure on us. In other words, what they do is when you start resisting, they'll, they'll find you and then they have the mili their, their uh, military marshals uh, thump down on you and then they cite you into a federal court and then you're fighting a federal court on a criminal side. Uh, we took, I saw that coming long, long, I figured that one out a long time ago. They were never able to do that to us. And because we took away one of the major tools of their oppression on people trying to resist their, uh, their, their crime. And I finally met the guy that I was writing a letter to, and he says, oh, we've been looking for you. And that statement alone, with a big smile he had, too, big smile, hearty handshake, we've been looking for you. And I go, well, what for? You got my letters. Why aren't you answering them? What you been looking for me for? Big smile back. See, they were, they were looking for us because they couldn't deal with the law. And that was a big answer. And so you learn how to, even within that system, when you're addressing that system within its own structure, and you're using the structure against itself to weaken itself or to actually destroy itself, you, there are certain vulnerabilities that you're going to have to analyze as you're going through this to protect against. In that case... That statement to me proved out everything of my, if I ever thought I had a weird mind about uh, being paranoid, that perfected the fact of that vulnerability 
was not exploited by the government when it tries to go and beat us down. I took that away from them. You're going to have to figure these things out as well. So this is when you get out in the middle of the field, get out in the, uh, on the riots. It's certainly impressive. It certainly is exciting for people when they are getting together to see that other people agree. It's certainly good when you're on a good point, on a moral point. It's certainly good when you're trying to go against a, a wrong, uh, but that's the pro that becomes that group target that can be targeted. I'm not saying ultimately don't do it, but you better really have that covered. I said that last week. You better be able to deal with that. Now, the things that they're working uh, as we do as we plug in, uh, as they give us uh, trinkets and toys to plug in with to subvert any action that we might have to keep us um, ultimately, uh, as they're looking, they, I say they, this is a government in position. When I can figure out that if I do a couple things on paperwork before I even get to the problem, that they end up going back and using against me, to attack me, to diminish my ability to fight and defend myself and put more load on me. And I take that away from him before it ever happens. I'm insightful enough before I take an action to build a record against myself that they'll use. Now I'm starting to get on the better, better path. I've proven out now that's the fact and that works. And then I see these stories about the stuff you're given and given to buy into for Christmas and anything else are us making choices ahead of time before something happens that we're typically oblivious to. We're blindsided by these things. EFF, uh, the gift guide, what's creeping us out was an article that came out given we're coming into Christmas and given that there's an infiltration and a surveillance and people are infiltrated by information that they don't even know uh, you have to be ahead of the game when you fill out paperwork with the government on what they're going to uh, do with it. It's not just what they're telling you. It, it, notwithstanding the problems that, they, that, that they, they create within that. I'm saying they use that information to externally check you. And if you don't know about that, you, you, will, be, you will become victim to this point. I'm not going to even talk about it because I don't want give to out, give out what goes on. When we, anybody who gets involved, they will find, you will find, uh, and it can be directed once you're inside, doing what you need to do to cause the distance, the, the shielding. There's the facts you will read that tell you what you need to do to avoid uh, at least uh, vulnerability in certain attack surfaces. And I don't even, I see, this is one of the problems I'd want to tell you all. But first of all, it's in one ear and out the other. On the second thing, then what happens, as I told you before, when the the, the amoeba, the bacterial amoeba, hears about this. The government hears about these things. They write legislation to block it. So when I learned that 20, I think it was 20 years ago I learned that. But that was actually, yeah, about 20 years ago. When I learned that, I stopped writing paper which found the, loop, the, so the loopholes. I had stopped writing paper that insisted on certain things because they would change the, the, the legislate, the legislators would change those things, this particular where it was about their revenue. And at that point, I stopped suggesting publicly to anybody uh, what the answers are. Instead, I've had to resort, because I don't want those things closed anymore, if you can get understand what I'm saying here. Uh, that's a weapon they were taking, uh, they were a limitation against their authority, because this is an ongoing occupation, and they have the right to change that op oppression over time. That was, that was the basis for what I started to see. So if you, you have to understand why I'm even looking at this. I'm looking at it because I was, under national law tells me to make sure I'm paying attention to it. And if I give answers publicly, that gets changed. That gets away from us from being an answer. Now, if I can do it by getting you to read, and then uh, if you don't quite get it, I can, but you get into the game, get your, 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 your leaves rolled up, and you're doing something for a purpose, I can, if, knowing me, I could, uh, and you have a question that's online with that, I can direct you to how, what you're looking at and how to look at it to see the answer. If you're not going to do it, you're either not interested and it's a waste of time, or you're not intending to do it right, and you can mess things up, and that's the other problem. You, you'll mess up stuff. And this is the thing about knowing too much. If you think you know too much, you start telling all that you know, you start actually spewing out to the enemy what their potential problem is before you got to use it. This happens to us all the time. Not, well, it doesn't happen anymore. It happens to us. It used to happen to us when we were dealing with public lands and these uh, 
and these issues regarding the environmental terrorists. If you give them the answer ahead of time before you get somewhere, they've got that all patched up. And if you could get the idea that there's a real war going on and there's strategies and tactics that you must apply, given you agree, you, you, you believe I'm telling you the truth even a little bit, and you give me that much license to tell you this is how it works, and you agree with a little bit of what I'm saying, you're going to have to understand that there is this war against us. I don't care what our opinions are otherwise. I don't care what we think should happen or shouldn't happen. But it's not. It's happened in some other way. So this is a war, and there's special certain tactics and strategies you must develop that you'll only know once you get involved. And so EFF guide what's creeping us out. They go through all the stuff I talk about, but in the offering to you of the toys that are, let you plug into the system that create the surveillance state against you. And the one that gets me is the very last one. I think it's the last one on this report. When it's actually being handed on over to your little ones, because that's the future how this works. It's not, it may not get you. They're just going to get you to do nothing now so that you don't protect your little ones in the future. So I'll just go through the list of the, the headings. If you find interest, you can go read about this, what the Electronic Freedom Foundation or whatever these people, EFF, believes is a problem uh, on their look. And they're, they're not liking this, this, this surveillance issue. Go ahead, those of you that want to continue down your dystopian future and break that come upon you, uh, keep uh, invoking Facebook's portal. It's an in-home camera, folks. <laughs> I can't even believe people buy this stuff. But at any rate, Face Home's a, a portal. Then we have the smart home hubs from Google, Amazon, and others. And what did I say to you? It won't be, it won't be the government that's the biggest problem in big data. It's going to be these corporations. For all the complaints I hear about corporations, I still people, still people seeing, still people see, see people dealing in, uh, with them and to do and foster and encourage these conditions of smart home hubs. Smart is not so intelligent, folks. Please tell people. I don't know how you tell people. Tell people. Expose what they're doing. Some people don't care about this stuff. I don't know about y'all, but those of us that do care, uh, be aware. Uh, there's a. They're going to offer you every opportunity to plug in. Smart home hubs. This is really, when you look at the inside of these hubs, what they do is shocking, literally shocking. And when you see the technology coming on what's going to be in those hubs, if it's not already there, it's, uh, well, I don't even know what to think about. It's so devastating what it has the potential to do. Uh, let me just touch 5G real quickly because this is a lot of this goes through the Internet. Uh, my thoughts are turning more and more because of the only two things that the federal government is granting money for and its purpose. 5G, which is not just 5 gigahertz. It's, it's a range that goes way up into, I think, terahertz. Uh, I want you to focus, for those of you who think about it, the 5G is maybe for the outside. But when you get up in the frequencies, those are not penetrating very well. And there's been a question, well, what are they, if they're not penetrating, they're not harmful. They're using 5G external because that's going to drive one of the 50% of the whole purpose for the federal, uh, federal 5G. It's to run autonomous cars. They don't need to penetrate. Now, if you're outside, you're going to get a skin effect. That could be problematic. The point is the higher frequencies don't have to penetrate if they're meant to work external. And the antennas on a car are going to be external. There's not going to be a problem. That's, but they do need to be, not have a blind spot around corners and things like around trees. That's where you think that highway clearing device you know, goes 60, 100 feet back off the highway. That's all to put antennas down in there so that these vehicles can go. So for those of us that are looking at 5G, and when we get to the problem of, well, if terahertz are not penetrating, then they're not harmful. Well, the purpose for that is, is a higher frequency is not penetrating, but it doesn't need to be penetrating for the purpose or why 5G has been told to us is happening. The federal purpose is for autonomous vehicles. They don't exist yet, but they're going to build that infrastructure and capacity to make, bring it, make it so. Not been tested on you at all. Not been tested at all. You're all focused on the radiation, and, there, and there's these these vehicles will be running around, which means they're either going to be a threat to you, or you're not there. You've been removed from your own your own highways. And so there's a whole other thought process that has to go on. But let's get back to the internal, uh, the home hubs. Remember last week I told you if you have a home hub, it can its radiation capacity of whatever frequency can be used, the anomaly of which can be used to identify you in your own home and track you. And so there's a 
again, we don't think so deeply. We look at what they, these surface, uh, the surface benefit that we're given for these things. We don't realize what the future may hold. But they talk about, again, we know law enforcement is involved in all of this. It's all part of it. Your smart homes are the surveillance devices. We now see they're going to be the radiation, internal radiation emitters, which can track you even if you don't have stuff. It's, it's, it's just the anomaly in the field they check. Verizon phones with app flash spyware. I don't know many apps that are not going to be spyware, folks. I just when you look at see what they're tying into your your, your systems, uh, they're all. So anyway, here's the list that's creeping out EFF, and here's the last one that really got kind of got to me a bit. This is not a, actually apparently not outwardly a problem, but it's what it does in conditioning you and your little ones. The Elf on a Shelf, or the Hanukkah uh, uh, counterpart Mench on a Bench. It's apparently a little toy that is made so that you can monitor children's behavior. And it's asked that you move it from room to room and so that you can keep track of what the little ones are doing. Now, what's the problem with that? It desensitizes surveillance in your little ones. And that's going to work against them in the future. They just have to expect it. It's to be what how they're, they're trained into. And so these... All these, you got fitness trackers, you got baby monitors, smart toys. Again, all this smart stuff's not so intelligent. Uh, the remember the smart vacuum that actually maps out your house, so that you get a smart vacuum it maps out actually the floor of your house, and then the what you how you distort the field that are emanating from all these devices is how they identify you in the room, and you say, "But I don't do anything wrong." Well, that's until someone who wants to do you wrong looks at you. Uh, but anyway, so let's be cognizant as we're moving into gift season, uh, the marketing season uh, of, of uh, that put a put Santa's face on it. Uh, that there, these are these are devices that is they call them smart. They're not. They're surveillance. They're planning to program your little you and little ones to accept surveillance. Uh, they are put, going on your front door. Face recognition going, is going to be everywhere. Uh, identif- you know, these identities. We also heard if, if they, they can uh, so they can see the bumps on your head, the distortions in your nose, and that determines who you are. So you may not have a, a real bad bone in your body, but they're going to see something in your nose, aren't they? And if you disregard what I'm saying here, you're you're really missing the point. In fact, you really should go watch the video right now. Go turn over to the. The pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows and just watch that indefinitely because that's that's the best we're going to see out of you. So here's the thing that got me was this elf on a shelf, bench on a bench, whatever you want to call this stuff. It's making surveillance normal, new normal. Then we read heavy screen times appears to impact children's brains. I think I got this from Jules' Twitter. And as I speak of that, I think Jules is firing up the uh, It's coming back. Some life support came back to the UCY YouTube page, at least. Maybe if you go back there, if you those of you that want to see what she's posting, it's not a lot, but it's some. Uh, I think it's her. I haven't talked with her at all. I got a little heads up from Chem Trailer over there in the UCY chat and uh, on Chat Tango uh, last week, and I saw some more going up. So uh, thank you, uh, Jules, for whatever you're doing there. I hope hope you're doing well, Uh, even if it's in just the posting of the. Even this broadcast, I appreciate that you did choose this broadcast, uh, one of them. Uh, but anyway, heavy spree, uh, screen times is what she posted as well. We've, I've talked a bit about this. I want to remind you, uh, as we go into gift season with the surveillance, the agreement that we train our little ones to be uh, re- receptive. Uh, oh, you know, it, it's a good idea. You know, on the surface, it's a good idea to keep track of your kids, right? Your little goats you know, and, and, your, and your sons and daughters. But but that's not what this is all about. you got to think three and four steps down into the future. You can't think of what you think about it today. Someone has designed this for a thing. It's a plan. And I've always said your, those plans are your problem, whether you recognize it or not. And so we choose into all of this stuff, and that's your... Con- you want, I keep saying the voluntarism that everyone wants to promote, that they don't see, is they're living it right today. And and that, that disconnect is serious, it's a serious defect. You have to, we have to rearrange really how we describe what we're involved in. But anyway, heavy screen time appears to impact children's brains. Uh, you can read, folks. I can read on and on and on. It's here. They're telling us exactly what happens. Devices are shown to prematurely thin the cortex of the brain's outermost layer that processes sensory information. 
it's desensitizing on top of your desensitization and physical action to accept the surveillance. The technology, and I have a whole lot of tabs I never got to that I, I wanted to put this together. See, I'm, the continuum of the information gets broken as well at the end of two hours and 60 tabs back. I was going to talk about this harm. These, there's a continuum of styles of harm uh, that I wanted to be reminded of, at least in this tab, that uh, it literally does, they're finding now these technologies do things to you. And in this particular thing, it's in the development of your little ones. And it goes on and on. This happened to be a CBS program, apparently, talking about this. When I'm reading an article. And, uh, again, I... I want to tell you and read about it because it's so important for you to know. But if you're not interested, why am I wasting my time? And as I say that, I'd like to again acknowledge Sound Minds on YouTube. I've been here 2017, I think, is having a live rebroadcast presentation uh, that he takes, or whoever it is. I'm really, I don't know, I haven't talked to anybody. Uh, I see the video. He takes and puts a pictures with statements like uh, Thomas Jefferson and, and quotes that Thomas Jefferson would have said, and then my audio underneath that, and then goes through all of these pictures. So it's kind of a neat neat difference. Something I wish I could do in real time that I, I don't think I, I can't. I've tried to work it out. It, it just doesn't, I'm not wired that way. He, he'll show you these documents on his, on his repro, reproduction. And I found it kind of interesting to listen, not to listen to myself, more than to listen to what I'm saying and then read something that's on the screen. It, it has a different effect as well. And so, uh, uh, thank you for re giving, you know, however many more, dozens and more people access to the broadcast content uh, over there at Sound Minds and, and putting together a video for people to put in their eyes. Uh, it, it's a, a little different lear learning. You get to see not everything is on what I'm saying. It's on another, he'll, they'll put up something that's interesting to them in the same context. And, and I noticed it kind of has a different way of, a, your mind works in a different way when you start seeing those. You listen and then you see. I noticed I was thinking about different things as well. Now, it may not have been exactly what I was saying, but that's not what my point is. You're getting another type of exposure. And I thank him for using the content of my broadcast in order to build the foundation for that. And I, I appreciate that, not because I want to have my stuff out there, but because I think I'm giving you information, pointing you in directions, giving you insights that if if we ever step up as a people, we stop complaining and whining and stop worrying about how deficient we might be. That, that was all I think a setup. And then we had our own our own foibles that we want to speak to our negative side that we're not capable. We are. Stop dwelling in there and start working. If we find something that we don't like, then focus in on that and start to fix it. I, I do believe this thing starts to change. It won't happen overnight, but it, nothing you know a freight train doesn't stop. Just because you will, it, you don't like it coming down the track. Like as I said to Catherine Austin Fitz in a Twitter, uh, because we don't want 5G or smart meter, because just because we don't want it is not enough. You have to understand the language of the communication, and then you have to understand the requirements inside that. It's and it's it's, all, it's still weighted in the favor of the system, but it can be defeated. We literally do that all the time. And so I, that, that's the only example I have to tell you is that, that you might start to follow. Because I don't want to see people hurt. I'm getting tired of seeing people hurt. I'm getting tired of seeing people think they know something and then they're going to get hurt because they, they do so much. And then they look like a martyr, but they're really, in my mind, the martyr on the wrong point. It's like they walked into the buzz saw thinking that, that they could outwill the teeth to be disappeared or something. I, I don't know. Instead of sticking a, a stick in the spokes, they, they kind of dove into the wheel themselves. I, I've seen this for decades. People do this. So here's the, um, uh, the, the, the devices that you're going to get for Christmas that they're smart, uh, are, are so smart, they're making your kids dumb. And they're making them dysfunctional. They're making them less sensorily responsive. Now, doesn't that kind of speak toward autism? Am I saying that it's causing it? No. But could it be contributing? Well, maybe maybe a little bit, you think? We don't know. Remember, one gene change in a, in a, in a genetic adjustment will make women sterile by the fact of having, it'll, it'll commit them to miscarriages in the future. One gene. And now the admission that the scientists don't know what they're doing. They're dealing in this, it's a wonderful little toy, isn't it? It's like, an, it's like a Christmas chemistry set in biology, but that's all it is at this point, and we're, we're now moving into 
literally into commerce with it all. So uh, these devices are, are not very good. Uh, they lead us into acceptance of surveillance and acceptance that uh, there is no privacy is perfectly fine, that other people can make decisions on that is perfectly fine. Uh, we keep buying into, we remember I read, read here, uh, EFF was saying, watch out the face, uh, the face uh, book, face plant portal, <laughs> a, a, a picture, I mean, a camera in your door doing face face uh, recognition and all, all this, getting the surveillance database. You know, at least TSA asked you, I mean, come on, I told you that the, the corporations were going to be worse. TSA at least asked you, do you want to go through this or not? They may beat you up after, but the point is they did ask. The government, the corporation just gets your consent by you purchasing, you're buying their stuff. And then it's not just face plant, it's not just some of this, uh, this internet virtual thing, the web page that you all work on. And Amazon's disturbing plan to add face surveillance to your front door. It's an ongoing assault. I guess that's all I want to say about that. I, we could read about it, but there it is. Our t uh, next, next tab, artificial intelligence experts issue urgent warning against facial scanning with a dangerous history. This is not even a new story. I've covered this a long time back. I covered it just more recently. Uh, again, this is like looking at the knobs on your head and telling you what type of character you are. This is, uh, I can't call it pseudoscience. This is just a bunch of nonsense put into recognition of uh, these, uh, these uh, digital uh, if-then-else statements. Uh, that, that's all this is, it seems to me. Uh, but it's, it's called, it's, it's given a brand, it's given an importance, and then people utilize it uh, to their their advantage to exploit against you, so it's not just face plant. It's it's uh, Amazon and their the the, the the science and it's all the Google. It's every it's anybody that's going to build a product anymore. It's these hubs of information. Uh, they're they're making a net. They're making this uh, net mesh of this stuff that uh, that. Um, you know, they won't need 5G to actually put this in. They just get a, give you give you access to the internet. They have enough power right now, I think, to do that with all the information that could be coming through this. But, it, but at any rate, no, notwithstanding that, the so-called experts say are telling us this facial recognition is dangerous, and yet here it comes, not without checking, to have people underneath the threat of better uh, the the benefit of better security or or whatever. Uh, going to put this in their homes, and you put this on this on your door. Now, if you go see, I'm looking at this. Well, there's someone that I'm going to go visit. Are they going to have this on their door? Well, likely not, because I won't probably be there. They won't be my friends much, because they'll have a different attitude about life. But let's say I now I'm considering whether or not there's this. The peephole is actually a camera doing facial recognition. And do I want that without notice being put into a database? I have no control of this stuff now. So it's, we call the word ubiquitous. It becomes around. We've been a, somehow we were pre-programmed to accept this, even though they want us to do the elf on a you know on a shelf. The, they're gonna. It's in us already. It's in in the, in the uh, so-called grown-ups. Artificial intelligence issues. Experts issue urgent warning against facial scanning. And how many products now we're talking that that's all they're doing? And that leads me does lead me over to. Uh, the TSA a bit and the facial scanning there and those that you might travel. Now, as I say it that way, I didn't really think about the broadcast in this context, but it seems to be like a preparatory for Christmas, uh, vacationing and travel and products and gifts and all that, but it didn't start out that way. It was more of the, the underlying surveillance condition and how we respond to it or not. And uh, the clearing, uh, there was a, a NextGov put out a, a, discussion, a discussion you might want to read, and I wanted to touch this because I found a very to me, it's a problem. In, in, uh, I don't know. I say to me, I hope it would be a problem generally the, of the content of, of this statement. I think it tries to be, this, here it is, uh, the, the title, Clearing the Air Around Facial Recognition in Travel. So we have the expert saying that, hey, watch out. And then NextGov comes up to produce this, uh, uh, this article, Clearing the Air Around Facial Recognition in Travel. Well, to me, we still got the problem. But they go through and try to bring reason uh, behind this, and they actually make some points, I told you, uh, about the condition of the TSA, and that it's really not supposed to be for you, unless you agree, uh, if you travel. It's supposed to be for foreigners. They actually mention that in trying to mitigate and bring down, tone down the rhetoric regarding facial recognition and the, 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 the checking out of you uh, at all. 
Uh, so, so let me just read the beginning of this so, that we, so I can get to the point of it. Uh, by now, it's impossible to ignore the way that biometrics are cropping up in airports across the country and anywhere else, folks. We just read it. It's going to be on your door, everybody's door eventually, apparently, and on everybody's wall in a net hub. Uh, the Homeland Security Department's Custom and Border Protection Agency is enabling the use of facial reg recognition, which in turn is encouraging all manner of innovative pilots which several major airlines and airports for scenarios ranging from bag check to boarding. At a baseline, biometrics holds significant promise to enhance security, speed up, and smooth out friction in the air travel experience. I find they use this word fiction, friction, friction, the rubbing. That's what they know they're doing to you. They're causing you friction. And this is what they're going to relieve and what they're causing, the friction. And you're going to find out when you read this, this word friction keeps popping up. And then I looked at that, when I saw that in a few stories, I said, this is a rolling out of a plan if we didn't know it before. And in this week, this last week, there was these articles that came out to explain this very point, that it's becoming now a range of impositions that are coming, innovative pilots that the companies are now rolling out relative to, to travel. And, oh, yeah, I can just hear it now. Oh, but I don't travel anymore. Okay, fine. This is coming to a door, the house door near you, okay, so and without notice. But at uh, any rate, getting to this, uh, my problem with the TSA, or the, trying to make reason with, Making, um, quelling the, the, con the, I don't want to use the word conspiracy, the misinformation in this. It, 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 on the surface, I agree with it. You need to get rid of all the red, uh, rhetorical nonsense, all the nonsense. Uh, my problem will be in what they don't tell you here. And what they do go through is explain, let's say, the TSAs and the condition, how it actually might be better understood. And they deal with it in the context of myths. And they said there's a myth out there that airlines will keep passengers' identities and facial data on file. And they say there's a myth that facial recognition is aimed at replacing all current security measures. And there's a myth that facial recognition is a pure precursor to Big Brother scenario inside airports and beyond. And there's a myth that technology isn't currently reliable enough to be trusted. Notwithstanding what the expert just said. Okay? So this, this article goes through and, and tries to expose these myths. In other words, when you look at it, you'd have to take the opposite, that they're going to be explaining it's the opposite. This is not like a big brother scenario. My position on that is, how do you know? First of all, where was the disclosure on the extent and limit? If, if it doesn't, as they say here, it doesn't apply to people, U.S. people, United States of American people, why are they taking your information at all? Why are they asking at all? What database are you becoming de noise in if they're only going after foreigners and for the security there? It's not what this, what, what the discussion, which seems reasonable enough in this article is. It's what they don't tell you about the limit or extent not being mentioned. What they don't tell you, but this is then acknowledging without any due process that they can make this rule against you. They can have these standards against you. They can impose the question, even. And then you find out when you get there, there's really no way to avoid this, right? Because it's on every, camera's going to be on everything. How they can, it's almost like a, a laughable, they say it wouldn't be Big Brother database. When they look at you, look at through all this, it ends up becoming part of government databases. And so the, I wanted you to present this. It's a discussion, and reasonable enough so, about the myths that are out there. My problem with it is it doesn't talk to you from the legal administrative side, and it, it buys you into that what they're doing is reasonable, and that the myths answered eliminate all the problems. And so, again, it's are we coming at this and thinking clearly? I'm suggesting you don't have to be ever wanting to go through the airport's to want to take this on as a viable thing to stop and find and test the true, get the true limit. Remember, they're supposed to do this with the least imposition. And I've asked you to consider what's 
the legitimacy of any imposition if you're presumed innocent. And, and I would have to say, be careful on where they even if they even I don't even know if they actually acknowledge that that's a standard. And you'd have to actually perfect that that the re, the, the standard of innocence, the presumption of innocence, is even something they consider. I mean, is it in the Constitution that they have to have to recognize it? And if it's not expressly stated, you better go find out how it's supposed to be impliedly enforced. So, clearing the way, uh, clearing, or they want to make a discussion. Next Gov wants to bring some some rationality to this whole thing. Don't don't blow yourself out. I agree with that. But they're not only they're only spe seemingly trying to speak to this through myths, but that doesn't uh, and then imply that if you answer the myth and it isn't these uh, grandiose errors of understanding about what it's supposed to actually do, that you actually understand the, the the thing at all, let alone in the entirety or let alone in the administrative imposition that may be way outside, if you understand it correctly, way outside of any legitimate need. To me, it kind of answered it. If it's not supposed to be used for United States uh, citizens, even even those that term, what is the question? Why are they even having it there at all? They should have a special cattle shoot for the foreigners only. Leave the rest of the people alone. But they don't. That's telling you something. This article doesn't address that as a myth, does it? And it can't, because it can't know. So we see now the word to hear, the friction that's going to stop, all this stuff that's not, it's all going to smooth out because we're going to get you to, get just give us your face. We hear the experts saying, be careful, be careful when they do that. But here it came this week. I couldn't believe it. So this rolls right out. Everybody, not everybody, but here it comes all in the same week to notice. Delta's new curb to gate facial recognition advancing fast. You know, the comment was, this stuff rolls out pretty quick. Yeah, it, it's, it rolls out real quick when it's a plan. And they're curb to gate. They're going to make your, just give them your face. I mean, at some point, I get the point. I get the benefit. But then they tell you that it's going to be friction if you don't. And they intend that against you, as I, I found this fascinating. They agree that they put friction on you now. And, and all I looked at that is it's, that's the friction, that's the pain they want to put on you so you'll accept the easier path. It's no different than you get into a town, and I, they, I think I was understanding they did this in Paradise, California, before the, before the fire, long before. They put they called road diets. They narrow the roads to put let only certain amount of traffic through. Complete violation of your granted the granted uh, disposal to that law that land uh, for highways and and the in, ingress and egress. But notwithstanding, this is the agenda working through the government, local governments that you had a chance to stop. They they put these constraints and restrictions in the ingress and egress. And what they're doing is they're making it so painful because you're now in the traffic jams that you use their public transit because that gets preferential treatment. And what do they do? They walk you out because they put the pain on you, except for the most stubborn of us. They got you out of your car. And they got you into a bus. And likely they have you, in, in your mind is also getting you into a more stack them and pack them existence so you can justify its use easier doesn't mean you're going to get away from that fire anymore, but that doesn't, no one thinks that far. But it's the same, they cause a pain for you that you want to relieve. And the buses and the public transit isn't the only answer. You do other things. But they also want you to get you into bikes. And then you find out that the bikes get preferential treatment. Then you start saying, maybe I'll get a bike. Maybe that three-wheeler, that little three-wheel pedal car don't look so bad. Because I'm actually going traveling faster in that thing. Uh, in this bike lane that I am in the car. And this is how they work it. They put a constraint on you. They put the pain on you. The friction wears on you. And I get it. You just want to stop the friction, don't you? They're talking about that right here. And that that the myth-busting article talks about it as well. It actually references this whole thing. Well, so Delta is going, what, gate to, what they say here, gate to, curb to gate. All right, well, I get to get to the gate. What about getting away from the from the airport? Well, Hertz has got you covered the same week. Hertz's airport facial recognition program uses customer loyalty rewards to change public opinion. Wow, that was a mouthful, isn't it? I've told you about the loyalty rewards as being the precursor. You went to Safeway or whatever store with your card, and the loyalty reward that you got was a discount and whatever bonus points. They got you using that. They did it like you did the 
They're the same. The elf on the shelf. They got you to do this stuff with the, the bonus card, the club card. The club, they're going to beat you to death in the future. You didn't see it coming, but here it is. And now they're doing the same thing. Loyalty rewards for facial recognition use. Loyalty rewards is social credit, folks. It's the same thing we've been to listening to in, about China developing this technology. It's rolling out in the United States as a benefit to you. To do what? Reduce friction. Getting you out of the out of uh, the the airport much quicker, and who doesn't want to do that? But here, did you hear the extension? It wants to also change public opinion. Of course, that's the buy-in. That's the agenda running. They absolutely need the public opinion change. They can't kick off the the the, the natives to what they want to resist, and you won't. Now I'm I hope I'm lying right there, but. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, I've been pretty good at saying you won't and you don't. But hit, look at what they're pushing here. And they tie this into what? TSA? DHS? Facial recognition? How is third parties and government uh, guidance not being a bro big brother database? So it might be a myth that there's a public database. It might be a myth that these companies are going to hold the data, but we don't know. And then all the evidence is, wait a minute, they're holding data. When you go after public opinion, you're going after the, the end game, folks. You're going after the long term. You're the occupier wanting the natives to change their opinions. And I'm telling you, the tools are in you, the failures are in you to get it done. And part of one of the failures is, uh, I keep harping, I'll be a little again, harpy, harpy, harpy. But the Protocols of the elders, elders of Zion tells us you've got this thing in you. You will not act. That's the cricket. That's why I mention it all the time. It's one of the main weapons against you. And then I realize it's also your improper action against something. If you improperly uh, um, defend yourself against an aggressor, you likely will lose that battle. I say likely. There's always miracles that can happen. That's the the pressure that's on this thing. So Hertz has some discussion. They talk about, they even say, it's, I think I read this and I went to do a check. They re reference something called CLEAR. Uh, and CLEAR's slogan. So we got another third-party uh, uh, accumulator of all this, uh, this data. Uh, CLEAR's slogan is the exit gate without the wait. How cute and quaint, folks. How smart. Follows the blueprint to a T. What blueprint? Well, a sensible vision CEO is a company here. Says loyalty rewards, and the logical next step is the U.S. and the good intelligence founder, Ellen Good, says huge potential for biometric customer loyalty programs. You're going to give it to them. The blueprint is you're going to give it when they ask. There's going to be no resistance to this. You like rewards. You like shiny things. You're a bunch of groupers. I really had, was had to, tossed on whether I cr chose crickets or school of fish. But anyway, they have it worked out. The, the company, C-L-E-A-R-S, I thought I read that in another article. I couldn't find it where they were using something called clear. Well, that's another word. Go look for things clear. So I went and researched it. Sure enough, uh, Sen Clear, C-E-N-C-L-E-R, selected to partner with DHS as a certified community behavioral health clinic. And I would just say, just on these, these titles and something I've read before, uh, these, this term clear will be tied to this. Uh, anything behavioral is this A2030 stuff. It's sustainable development. You will behave in the future. That's why they go to social credit. So it's right here. They're doing this. Uh, clear is an attachment. It's also tied into the, BH, uh, the DHS as a partner. Public-private partnerships are how they're subverting this uh, due process that they're required. The, the, the third party doesn't have to answer to you. It doesn't have to answer even to FOIA. And the government get, gets benefit. It's the same style of trick when the five eyes or agent or governments, and the uh, surveillance agencies and nations, uh, decided that they would each in investigate, they would each surveil each other and then hand over information that, that uh, the nation themselves could not get themselves. They could get from another country who surveilled them. 
So you're looking at that is the global grid. That's the global mesh structure. They agree that they will be surveilled. Each country agrees they'll be surveilled by a foreign country in order to gain the information they need for uh, the, to, to go after people in their country that they can't get within the constraints of the law, which means it works. The law sits there to be done, but it sits there to be exploited. And that's what's going on there. We haven't stopped. But clear, clearly is clear here that it is involved as an integral thing, idea, concept that's already been laid out. They've already got you wired, folks. They're just waiting for you to plug in. It's over and over and over what's going on here. And you say, well, that doesn't get me. What is that? I'm never going to go travel. Well, you're going to go down the highway. You're going to believe you, you're you not going to fight against your right to use the road versus your commercial uh, privilege, which they require a license for, your permission to travel that highway by committing a crime, but so much. Have you ever thought, do you think this stuff through what I'm telling you folks? If you have, if the Congress granted the use of the highway without restriction in the 1866 law of section 8 to the construction and use of the highway for all lawful purposes, how is it that you're required to admit you do an unlawful purpose requiring a license when it comes to the state? It is a huge, huge, huge uh, dis disconnect between people, their understanding of what rights are, the understanding of the law of the land, and the understanding of how it's been subverted. Uh, so you are going to now uh, use that highway. You're going to go get your license because you don't. Uh, you make every excuse not to make, even with the license, uh, an attack against that right and a fr as a fraud and an extortion against you, uh, notwithstanding your civil rights, uh, as uh, to circumvent your right to use the road as Congress disposed to you. You will take on the state's liability, and you will sign it. You will agree by buying in, by putting your signature on the applique, the application for the license, saying that you do use that road not as a right. You use it as a privileged commercial purpose, uh, as a crime that you need to be regulated for. And uh, so here we now we move all this facial recognition, this digital technology, and this real ID comes on into into your state. You think I'm not going to go fly on a plane? I don't need to worry about the TSA and this facial recognition, folks. Well, so Louisiana adopts digital driver's license. Is this new news? No. We're just now seeing that they're actually moving the plan through at least one state. And I'll say, the way I understand Louisiana, and still it's pretty Napoleonic, this is probably the worst one you could probably be in at this time for that. But notwithstanding, this is where now Louisiana is going to roll out their new digital driver's license app that I talked about behind the woodshed was coming just months ago. It's here. It's called the L.A. Wallet to confuse all you all up in California the L.A. wallet. Now, that gives you L.A. is capital letters. That is the federal designator for that state, is it not? Am I, am I missing that? I mean, am I an error in that? I suppose every state will have their wallet. If you don't hear the crypto blockchain, leash chain, master chain coming down the pike, you're rattling on the roads right now. They'll have an... Uh, um, Wherever your zip code designator district is will be that type of wallet. CA for California wallet, OR, a WA, the WA wallet. That'll be a good one for Washington. The WA WA wallet. The wallet. WA wallet. That'd be a fun one. The ID wallet out of Idaho. Wouldn't that, isn't that going to be interesting? And you'll get your wallet. but You'll plug right into this. You're going to have a digital ID. It's right around the corner. You're going to be tied into this, nah, this non-existent Big Brother database, aren't you? Aren't you? Well, another myth busted. But uh, here, here it comes. I, just, I don't even know what to say. Uh, you can read the story. It's here. They're bringing it in. They agree with it. There's all kinds of things that attach. Biometric security is the main thing here. I was also reading a, something quick. I didn't read the story. In, there's now been a uh, somewhere in some country, whatever, might have been the United States, might have been China. They can take a 3D representation of your face and use it to unlock your phone. And that's legal, as long as they get a warrant to do it. Think about this, folks. What we're walking, or what the prison and the, uh, that we're walking ourselves into. But uh, here it is, Louisiana is being the first to adopt a digital driver's license. It's uh, uh, Unless you all start understanding what I'm talking about and start to lay out uh, a strategy and a tactic to approach this, even if you have it right now, I don't know how you avoid in, uh, this whole condition today. I don't.
I don't understand it. And you won't have the you won't have the tools at all, at all. Not even close. You, oh, you have a right to drive. You think, but it's all wrong. You, if you don't listen to what I'm saying, you're going to go wrong. And where we're asserting what I'm saying, the government goes absolutely silent. So I don't know which way you want to go. I don't. I'd rather, I, for myself, it's better that they go silent than that they they think that they have some authority. But here it comes. If you think that oh, I'm not going to go get in an airplane, I don't have to worry about TSA. No, it's coming to a state near you. They're worried. You know, I'm wondering now with all this uh, state non-compliance needing waivers for the real ID. I think technology might. I think they're backing off because they realize technology now is just going to eliminate the need for that license. No different than your face becomes your paperwork, although you have to have your backups with you. What's in your wallet and your other documents? Your face is going to be that wallet. But that's going to happen now with digital uh, digital technology. Now, how does that get implemented? You will have to have a phone. There is no way this is going to be implemented. Eventually, this will have to be 100%. It will not surprise me that you get uh, that the price of a driver's driver's license goes up uh, somewhat substantially, maybe up to 50 more dollars, and they hand you a phone so that you can do this. And then you have no excuse. They register to, you to vote. They create a bank account. They go ahead and give you your social credit. It's all right there at the motor vehicle department, don't you know? Did you see this coming, folks? So you, oh, I'm not going to fly. I don't have to worry about TSA. No, no. This country, United States of America, it went every country. It went to what, folks? It went into no judicial recognition. It's now into executive expedience. Why? Because we live in a nation of crickets. We don't understand anymore what is up and what is down. We love shiny rewards and things. But we are losing the moral capacity, I think, that we ought to have kept as well as. that would To keep our government the way it was supposed to be limited would have meant that we kept our moral uh, backbone. And I think we may have been uh, remiss to be paying attention to that. Louisiana is going to your digital ID. You have a QR code. You have your picture. It's all agreed to by the state. You can exchange that with the cop who's going to cite you. I don't even know how you how you now avoid. See, what I'm telling you people to do now when you can do so on paperwork between the time you get a ticket and go to the and go to the court and then go to the Secretary of, Terry, uh, Secretary of State of your state and say, hey, wait a minute, that's a fiction that doesn't exist. So you, the officer wrote a fraud on the paper, so this thing needs to be set aside as a nugget little point that may or may not work for you, but it's there in the rules to go do. But you're not going to be able to do that now. And so you see, they're already ahead of us. There is no remedy against this thing. You hand them your phone. They get the information from you. Why? Because you signed up for the phone. You've signed up for the ID. You signed up to be in that system. You didn't assert a right against their imposition. You, you, you didn't listen behind the woodshed, and if you did, you never acted to, to fortify yourself in order to be able to respond. Yeah, I'm really, I don't even know what more to say, but here it is. The TSA is right in your face. In Louisiana, there you go, folks. It's coming. It's right around the corner. Keep, keep being crickets. Now, another thing popped up, another these impositions, but uh, another thing that's been determined to be okay. Uh, you think uh, this exactions of every kind impose this extortion on you as a joke? Uh, we heard about it in, uh, uh, in, in Obamascare. And a report came through that said that the Obamascare, the federal judge rules Obamascare, well, excuse me, Obamacare, was unconstitutional. I saw a bit of fanfare over this, uh, but uh, when you look very carefully at what happened in the case, I'm not so sure. Again, to me, looking down the future, into the future, it's not just uh, in this regard that it's, uh, well, first of all, it's just, it, it, it has been ruled unconstitutional, but for a reason I don't think it's valid, actually. They're he's trying to, this judge seemed to take the severability clause a little bit, a, a little bit to the extreme, and I think he grabbed more than he actually could. And the whole point about this is in the future, you're going to be underneath this care, this government care. And they have to get you there. My problem with this whole thing is it's never been argued, uh, and the Supreme Court didn't take it up, that this tax 
bill measure that was determined by the Supreme Court to be such did not originate out of the House. And I don't see anybody discussing that, and this case doesn't discuss it either, which would invalidate the Obama. That would invalidate the Obamacare. It would require that they do it over again, completely. But this judge said that the provision of a penalty against those that didn't get it, that was not was going to come into force and effect in January, that you wouldn't be penalized if you didn't get it, invalidated the entirety of this Obama scare medical treatment scam that they're putting on everybody. And I think you need to look very carefully at this. This is, was set up to probably go to the Supreme Court because they can't let this stand this way. Not that they can't let it stand to kill it. It was not done on a proper reasoning, it seems to me. Just because a penalty for not getting the plan uh, goes into effect to not penalize those that don't get it doesn't invalidate the whole thing. And I just said it that way. If you don't, if you agree with that, then you can't agree that this decision can continue this way. If you don't agree with it, I'd like to hear your reasoning behind how a penalty, removing a penalty from one from someone, invalidates the rest. And I, I'm, a, I'm just assuming that there's a severability clause in the act, so that if one part's found invalid, the rest stands relative to its 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 in, 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 imputed purpose. So Obama, care, at least at this point, it's, it's ruled unconstitutional. I didn't hear a big uproar within the medical uh, mutual aid society insurance company, so I don't know that this is going very far. But neither here nor there. What they want to do, and you can look forward to this, is they need to make an adjustment in this so it's much more universal. And there's something, there was a problem in the way that they were going to penalize people for not getting it that was actually showing a weakness in the system of it. And they're going to remove that, but they're going to have to still impose it. So this is not really going to go away in my view. And if, if well, I don't think it's going to go away. The, the, the way the future plan is, they need everybody on a servitude. The way this will work will be through your phones as well. It may not be a phone, but I'm saying there's the digital technology that's keeping track of all this. Remember we heard early on, the doctors would be sent your file and what the doctor that your vet that's looking at you and examining you would send his report and he would have to wait for an answer from the death squad over whether or not they were going to be treated for something. That's not in place yet. And so we look forward to that. Of course I was happy to hear the unconstitutionally called out, but, but I was I'm not I'm, I'm going to be skeptical here. I really don't think that it it, it ultimately doesn't uh, incorporate. They're going to enforce it. And what they're, I think they're doing ultimately, they certainly need some adjustments. It isn't quite what they wanted. They also want to legitimize it with multiple decisions to the Supreme Court while they're not speaking to something like the origination of the bill in the Senate in, as opposed to lawfully and constitutionally in the House. And yet, so in the future, the, you'll be able to, people will point, well, there's three, there's three, uh, court cases and Supreme, went to the Supreme Court and validated this law and they're going to attempt to blow by the fact of its origination as one problem I saw in it you know we talked about this years ago now I also want to remind people look into the future as well in January what happens the house becomes democratically driven they have they do get the majority now what do they get to do they can literally make a new law that overrides this and does exactly what they want to do even based on this court case to fix it. And what they'll fix is the problems they have and the Democratic Party will be able to do it. And they'll come out and say, look what they did for everybody and it'll be one of the bi another big devastation. Not that the Republicans don't do it because they, do they, they didn't do what they should have done when they could have. But the Democrats will be able to change it. They now have an impetus to change it. So be careful of what this court case might do. And now the Democrats have this majority that they can push through um, to get this stuff fixed a, a bit. So just be careful on what we think is going on here. Um, and be careful now that we see the integration of all this digital technology to bring the databases forward together, to tie it to you, to chain it to you, the blockchain. You can be chained to this block, folks, uh, and it's this is a fairly encompassing condition. They, when they said cradle to grave, they were not joking. And this again is a definition of a prison that you may or may it may be transparent to you. Oh, you may know you don't like things, but 
I'm talking about a real prison. When you start getting into the conditions like we see Elf on a shelf, your mind is chained to the servitude as well. And can you understand the conditioning of a little one who doesn't know any more, any better, no different than us? How far do we go through life thinking, you know, life was pretty rosy in the United States of America? And then we come to a certain time, and, and it's not that way. And I look over real quickly, I see Beetle. Thank you, Beetle, for tuning in. Any good news? Yeah, you have a choice to make. And that choice could be your good news. And I know that may not satisfy lots of people, but that's it. You will choose your good news. I mean, listen, the world's a world, pretty a wonderful place. It's, it's some people in it that are causing trouble. And then there's a lot of us. Not that we're overpopulated. There's just lots of us that want to do things. But our good news is in us. And are we, are we going to step up in our own responsibility to make that so? And I don't know if that satisfies your question or not, but I, I know that's part of it. And maybe I'm a little bit of an optimist. Maybe I'm a lot of an optimist. But not that I see rosy times, but because I don't. I don't see lots of rosy times, but I do see that our answer is us. And all of us real right now would fix a lot of this. Uh, but as long as we're fighting each other, even arguments in the chats, whatever, even as, even amongst people that are living, we all part of the choir, the, the choir par participants are arguing with each other. We're never going to get past into what I'm talking about. No, nothing that's going to happen. And yet our answer is right there. It's us really trying to refocus our attention on responsibility to ourselves and then to our, uh, each other. And our good news is us looking, what world do we want? And, and really moving to make it so, as trite as that might sound. So getting back over to the tabs here, uh, the judge rules that Obama scare is unconstitutional. Uh, you know, it was never care. It's treatment. And it's treatment for profit. And that seems to be a bigger problem. And uh, so we also then have a, this treatment that, that comes on is we have products that we buy. And we have licenses that were regulations that the government allows. And I've told you some of those are like the mitigation between harms versus nothing in the world's perfect anyway, but they're mitigations of known harms or knowable harms if we would hope, we would hope, but really known harms which has been exploited against you. And uh, there's been a story coming through with Johnson and Johnson and cancer and some, some judicial discussions that have come down, some jury verdicts against J, uh, Johnson and Johnson. Well, it's also coming out now, and in some regard, I don't see why this is so such a surprise once we understand what was really going on. The, the point about this report here is that you may try to care for yourself, and you may be advertised, uh, your opinion, your public opinion may be such that you've been told that something's good for you when you, you have, you're actually being misinformed. And I say that was, that's non-full disclosure. Uh, that's what the government does. That's what corporations learn to do, and they're given license to do that. In fact, propaganda, government propaganda, is, is that at all. Advertisement is propaganda of some sort. Uh, they just want you to buy their stuff. It could be as innocent as that. But the problem is, is when you're going to be a danger, when there's something of a danger to you, and the people that are offering you something know that and don't tell you. Now we got a little bit different condition. What's coming out now is that J&J, &J, uh, jo Johnson & Johnson, knew for decades that asbestos lurked in its baby powder. And so... We're having a deception here that was not de not uh, disclosed. It was not even disclosed properly to the F uh, to the uh, government. However, if you look and read this story carefully, you realize that they'll talk about an influence. And the people who are like against uh, J J J J and J here doing this, they're, they're they're kind of against the condition. And I, I think they overlook a bit uh, on pointing out problems, but they don't. They don't say, well, this is systemic and we have another problem. In the fact that you'll read in here that there was, again, an administrative process and procedure that nobody else participated in, that this company was able to have the government prefer a certain test, the quality and resolution of the test of which guaranteed whatever the, the contaminant was could meet a 1% level and not be seen. And so here we see inside this story how the mechanism already in place that allows the right out in front of everybody's face the ability for anyone, not just this company, to manipulate, if you will, if I can say it that, manipulation, the FDA, I think it was in this case, to prefer a test. 
Well, isn't that the same as I've been calling out in the problem with 5G and the federal experts that the FCC looks at? And when you look at those, comp those private third parties, they're missing a whole lot. That's like a test that the FCC agrees to that was somehow agreed to that needs to be addressed first. The test hides, the test itself hides harms. And I wanted us to see in this story, that very agreement is in this story, that it's, there was a, a preferred, uh, there was an administrative procedure and a preferred test that if any of you all had understood this at the time, you would be in that, and you would say, wait a minute, but that test will hide 1% of a problem. Now, it may take a more technical view, but I don't know. Are, we, are we all going to just lay down and die because we're stupid or something? Are we going to start taking responsibility for certain things? Now, J&G wasn't disclosing that they had some of this in their, in their product. They were claiming they, they didn't. But then we see the tests agreed by the government gave what we would perceive as being a the license to, to pollute a little bit, wouldn't it? But it wasn't really underneath, it wasn't really by the test an overt um, criminal intent. It was that by choosing it, they could hide the criminal intent. And that looked lawful. And these are the kinds of subtleties I'm saying when I talk to you about how we stop this. We have to go back in, and I know I don't like it. I'm not saying I like any of this. I'm saying this is what needs to be done, not what we want to do. We, the standards that are set, that are being accepted, aren't being challenged. No different than authority isn't challenged. Jurisdiction's not challenged. Those are subtly different. You got to understand that uh, the the limit, uh, the limit, and extent of certain things that are in the government being done that come out that harm us, we just blame government. Instead of looking and saying, wow, this system was set up to allow it. If, we, if there was no one else to say, uh, to say anything, those that were speaking win. Being crickets isn't speaking. And again, this is a, within the news, we have a, more notice of certain things that are going on. We have problems. These companies will go for a profit. They knew it was there. Now, to maybe a little bit of their credit, they, they did work hard to clarify and get rid of the, even that test. They knew they had hardly not anything. But, I mean, looking at talc, if you just look at the mineral, you know that it, there's minerals and minerals and minerals and minerals, folks. It's just that's how nature, that's what the earth is. And nothing's perfect. And so that they didn't, that the government didn't look and say, wait a minute, you're going to have some contaminants. It's pretty interesting. But that they agreed to a test that allowed for 1% contaminant. And less than 1% was enough is where the problem starts. Almost in innocence, I can see how this could happen. So in a way, I almost can't blame it until after all these court cases, people who wouldn't take it anymore and sued, even if they lost, they were able to go in the process, and the process of a court case allows you discovery. And through all these years of court cases getting discovery, just clawing at the company to get whatever discovery Looking, but taking it back and taking a step back and looking at all the discovery that was made, getting a hold of all the discovery from all the cases, finally shows through the evidence of the communications, all that showed that the, the company was was not being forthcoming, if I can say it that that much. Now this opens up a whole other thing, but it took people stepping up, saying enough is enough. In this case, it certainly took the attorneys to do so. And whatever their whatever their motivation was, I guess I, I I don't know. You know, it's usually bucks. Some of these people you hear are very. It's in their heart to fit help people. They realize the you know the skullduggery in the system. But I not just that. I don't want to focus on just that. I want to say, listen, that that happens. There's a mechanism behind why that happens. We're seeing it now. If we didn't see it before, if I didn't see it before, and I didn't. I certainly appreciate that it's there right now, but I went a little further than seeing it and complaining about it. I said, okay, well, here's a couple things that I don't want to see. Let's, let's put it in the context that this wasn't, wasn't one of the subject matters, but it, it happened this summer. I really don't want to be burned up by a forest fire. Paradise wasn't my example. We had our own forest fire. Now, maybe I better understand this a little bit better. And even though we've been working on that problem for probably four years now, that was a 
was an excuse for me to go look at forest fires if I had none before. That well, it's going to come if it comes over. We're already alert one. It's not very far far from alert three, and we're going to be burnt up. To start saying, well, I better start taking some of these things, important things, uh, to make them important and be responsible enough to carry them through to figure out how do we limit our risk to that. There's nothing going to be perfect about these answers. But when we're not participating, and now we see all these years J&J got away with it because they were able to have a say that nobody was interested at all. I almost wonder, not to diminish the, the non-disclosure harm, but you know, isn't this somewhat of a self-inflicted wound? And you say, well, but I, we shouldn't have to. Yeah, I agree with that. But if we're not engaging, we don't have an understanding of how we're going to fix the reason why we have to engage. We we have to do fix. We do have to fix that. There ha and this is the I think the accountability thing. There isn't much. And so until we're involved and we start seeing the nuance of that. The government that is supposed to be looking out for us has been left to run wild. And we can only see that's a, nat that's a natural law that it would run wild without its own constraint. Without its own leashes being, you know, it breaks out of a leash, out off of a chain every time. And we let it, so it learns to do that. And so I think we have a little part to play as I get more and more into looking at all this. It wasn't a joke to make a dynamic government that was supposed to protect its, itself and the people, too. And the people included non-people. Because why? It was a commerce base. And I keep saying that people underappreciate that condition, and that happened at the beginning. It happened before the beginning, actually. All right? So we, anyway, so we'll go back lost on that. So we have uh, things that we use. Uh, things that we're told is okay. We have a court systems that are there to grind away, and I, I don't like it, but that's what they, that's the system. Until we figure out how to fix that part, and some of this is uh, really a plan inside the system we know is corrupt anyway. Again, the Bar Association controls a lot of this. But there's no accountability to that. It's a self-accountability, which is, ends up being no accountability. Until we address that one, that's another layer of the problem. Uh, that a lot again starts to get this thing to roll out. We have court systems that uh, allow certain conditions. There's remedies that are there for tools that we, you know, whether we want, we do, we agree, we engage them ourselves or understand them at all is not the point. The point is they're there, and that people do engage them. And and if you look in the world, you see how how unseparate everything is how integrated things are. And I said, if you're under this rule of law, you're, you're, you're underneath a control structure. And it's not different. It's not distinct. They may speak to about in it about it in different ways, but it ends up being a control, a, a general control that is affects a global range. It's not stuck in one jurisdiction. And I'm always interested when those pop up. And something, one of those popped up. That you think, we look at these judges, these courts, and I talk about the Bar Association, and you start talking about these, how these attorneys are all working, interact together and, or not, how these systems, these plans roll out, how the arguments are made or not made to bring up the point. Like I said, you know, I'm always interested that the origination of the Obamascare tax didn't come out of the, out of the, out of the house like the Constitution says it's supposed to, yet, it hasn't failed for that all these years. Why? What bar association member is not looking at that? Or intentionally so. That should be the first thing you do. I mean, anybody who's in law or, or in these battles, if you will, in these challenges, in these questions as to the limit, has to look at jurisdiction and authority as the very first thing. Why don't they? So when stories come up that, that people respond in Everywhere else but where the rule happens in a court, I take a notice of that, just if nothing else, to say, oh, look how integrated this global order actually is. You want to start seeing the global order, stop the conspiracy ideas, and start actually finding the ones that are existing. I don't care if the queen's a reptile. I really don't care. What, what about one of her henchmen called an esquire, attorney, a barrister, who's uh, working within a system that, that has control over five-sevenths of the earth? 
I want to know about that system. And here we hear a little bit of this. So, not the Queen, but maybe an extension to the Church of England, to the Vatican. Listen to this. Super injunction. Never heard of such a thing. Super injunction silences news about Vatican officials' child molestation conviction. A super injunction. Who ever heard of such a thing? But this is an issue where the third highest Vatican official was convicted of sexually molesting choir boys in Australia. And an injunction issued that no news would report a bit anything about it. And guess what? Instead of being the news and being able to issue their notice to you what the news is, they complied with an order of a court in one country, globally, over an Vatican official. Uh, one brave website did very carefully report on the matter after doing what? After going to attorneys and discussing it with Australian attorneys before they even printed. In other words, they were getting the implied uh, correct check of through bar members in order to be able to even report on this. This fascinated me. Look at the lock that is on this by an order of, of a court in one country. If you don't think there is a global order. No, it's not the one they talk about you hear all the time. It's the one that exists. And it sits right here in this story. Then maybe I should just stop. You can you can do the research on this stuff. It's it's out there. It just bl blows me away. We we have all these things going on, and we don't we don't really pay attention. But that is another story on this Vatican number three on trial for historical child sex charges. That was a report that did come out, but it got quashed pretty quickly. Now it wasn't just a trial. They don't want to get to give the information. This guy was convicted over this. The, the thing about it, not just the, how heinous that was, the conviction, but that it was silence, that, 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 the, 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 the gruesomeness of all that is silenced in the world. Should fascinate you. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. What is the power in the world? Especially a touching, in particular the Vatican, if you don't, if you understand this connection. And I don't talk too much about it all. It's there to be found, some of it. And some things I told you, I never, I just found it, didn't collect it up. It wasn't, I didn't carry it in my, as documents that I could prove to you. I was looking for where America went. It led me through this trail. It wasn't relevant to my stack of papers that I never, never actually stacked because I found out this, uh, this whole thing is a setup. You live in an open air prison globally. This world order thing is a cover. They want to focus you on something else about the world order. And then all the everybody wants to make a their little mark, and so they start calling everybody names. We've got reptiles running, aliens, all this other stuff. It's, it's all much more simple than that. It's actually mind-blowingly organized already. And there's a couple of paths that do it. And they always end up into these areas that I'm always fascinated by. What is a super injunction that has global effect that everybody trembles before even mentioning it, and doesn't mention it, actually. They actually don't get the real total story out. We do not know the total story on this. Who is so powerful that you gave in the third most important Vatican official, and we read a little, I read to you about the power structure there. He happens to also be the treasurer, I think, if I understand correctly. Who paid for this million dollars, millions and millions of dollars of defense, and he lost, folks? No one's talking about all this. But anyway, why do want to focus on it? I found the just the super injunction idea, where I know that there's a limit to jurisdictions and authorities. The super injunction idea was just a fascination to me. How does that exist? And yet it does. Look at the effect. Look at the trepidation one website decided to needed to do if you when you read the story. What they needed to decide before they decided to actually print something about it. What's in the world, folks? Very fascinating. Very interesting. 
you see, I tell you about limits, and then you see this thing that, that almost shows that there's no limits. And I'm wondering, why? What is the penalty? And in a way, I'm saying that as a real question. How timid is the world against these men, folks? There's power structures, apparently, that t terrify people. And I'm, I may be naive enough to not understand that, so I may not be, if I had information, I wouldn't know not to print it. But, I mean, I'm not that position, so maybe that's why I don't have the information at this point. What is the power in this world that keeps this silence going is just amazing to me. I'm not going to even say it means anything. I'm saying, what allows it? And if we can't even do that much on a global scale, do you think we have much power as, a pe as peoples in the world? We, the peoples, have a whole lot of work to do. And until we do, it's these kinds of things that start happening. Even after a conviction, we can't get the proper information. And it, does, it just kind of harkens back to the Kennedy assassination, doesn't it? This wasn't even a killer, be a murder or exec public execution of a public official. It's just a conviction of a crime that they've been doing for all this time underneath the color of benefits to everybody. It's global, folks. It's just not any one place. There are things afoot globally. We are told of certain things that we, or if we don't dig them up ourselves, that we're just told things and we agree that they're they're uh, they're fact. In fact, I was asked to, to respond to uh, uh, something about the California fires. I don't even know how to respond to it. Now the first pic, the first picture doesn't even, the statement under the first picture. I, I, I kind of don't have a statement. It's just not even factual. Where do I begin? And this is what the misinformation of the world is out. There's other proofs to do. They want to talk, if I can use the word precise and exact and proof and evidence enough times, I guess you believe I have exact proof and evidence, and it's nothing. Because there's other things that would, if you are open to it, that would have to be pressed against the fact of anything. In order to make it the truth of what you're looking at, or at least the best you can construct. And this is the kind of thing you're being just, you cannot construct. They don't want you to know this stuff for a reason. They is these people that apparently have secret power over the world to shut almost everybody down, except one and then to a limit. It's, to me, just I just kind of get lost in that thought. Who has that kind of power? And here's the point for me. See, I ask that because I really don't know of anyone, anything that has that kind of power. How naive am I, folks? And so and when I look at that, I have to say, man, I'm going to have a whole lot different bar to set you know, for people. You know, they, the whole world is sh shivering in its timbers, and I'm kind of sitting here, well, what's to shiver? What's, what's to be afraid of here? And yet that's there, folks. Don't disregard what I'm saying. It's there. I'm naive to it. I don't understand it. I wouldn't. I don't agree with it. I'd, I'd call it out in a heartbeat. You may not hear from me after that, but I don't even know that much, do I? But here's the fear. You don't respond because of this fear. And those that fear, that, that do fear, are, are trep, act in trepidation of something. And I'm trying to bring you an idea that says, listen, you don't even get into that room. You just start bringing the stuff out in a way that that's not even a possibility for you. No, I have my detractors, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't change my experience about all this. And so, we have a super injunction? Are you, are you kidding me? A super, a global super injunction that actually has people f afraid in the corners. Should, should be an interesting, an interesting thing to, to look at. But the, moving on here, it's, uh, the consequences of not being told things, moving on uh, through uh, technology like the, Johnson and Johnson not let it, not disclosing they had asbestos fibers of a certain type, and they even got into the nuances of the of the fiber and the asbestos and the type, and you get a little bit of a, an idea and an instruction on mineralization. It's kind of interesting, uh, but we're not disclosed of harms, and they try to cover it for profit, and then they they figure out that they're going to get caught. So how are they going to cover? It's just a big cover up thing. You see how the government can be manipulation manipulated even when it's trying to be. Uh, uh, just neutral. You can see how that can happen, and that happens because we don't speak up. Uh, and uh, that kind of got me to thinking about this other non-disclosure. 
uh, that you start to hear and find as we move along while we're being told about the medical uh, medical treatments, not cures, and the FDA is, is helping us to understand that they're safe or recognize it's safe, all this nonsense terminology, uh, these things that aren't really what they are. Then we run across the story where um, we're told, uh, like after the fact, after and because a problem developed and the system itself starts to eat on itself, like I was talking about, we're moving on now to what uh, we're told is good for us or we're going to be imposed upon because the government says it's okay. And then you start finding the cracks in the porcelain, but this time it's really fast, but only after something happened that was kind of out and hit hit the wall of beyond. And not many people are willing to go hit that wall. There, there's a super injunction on everybody's consciousness within a special the study, in this case, gene editing, that no one wants to bring up the harms because if they did today, they wouldn't have a job because the harms that they'd have to bring up are serious. And here we have this story now. What we're talking about since the twins that were genet supposedly and genetically engineered uh, to and came to fruition and now are the girls in the world that were first supposedly first human CRISPR victims, they don't even know what's going to happen in the future. We have a, a report that comes out. The un I tell you about these unintended consequences. Well, here's the report. Uh, unintended consequences have included enlarged rabbit tongues and extra pig vertebrae as bioethicists warn of hubris. And that's the subtext of this title, Big Tongues and Extra Vertebrae, The Unintended Consequences of Animal Gene Editing. This is coming out all at a time when the FA, FC, um, FDA allows gene modification through the CRISPR method that I've been telling you, watch out. They've never been answered, able to answer these unintended consequences, these mutations that go on, these changes in how the cell responds, just as a defense mechanism. I've been talking to you about this for years. Well, here it is. The purported birth last month of the world's first gene-edited human babies claimed by the Chinese scientists spurred a wave of global outrage. This is the super injunction. What power is out there? This is their conscience. But the problem is they can't say it because if they do, it would shut the whole thing down, wouldn't they? When they find out the unintended consequences have a real force and effect. The scientists have denounced the as yet confirmed experiment as irresponsible in the development of the reinforced fears that redesigning the DNA is moving ahead too fast and without necessary oversight. Enough said. You can go read it. What have I been saying? They're moving and allowing CRISPR technology with these unintended consequences, which are not unknown. We already know that. If I hadn't heard it or felt it myself back in the 70s about this technology as stories to us, the future coming, uh, I certainly have had them in the last few years when they're telling us that they're there. They're moving too fast. But look at They're moving too fast, admittedly so now. And evidence that when they use this condition, they change genes that alter the physical structure of the thing that they're doing, the unintended consequences. Folks, they're already doing this in your foodstuffs. And it's okay. This, to me, is the J&J &J problem. Well, let's make a test that we can only see the resolution. We can't see 1% of the stuff by the test. And that's the pollutant that we're, we're putting in is just under 1%. So the test resolution's not fine enough to find it. Well, if I'm not looking for unintended consequences, I'm not going to see none, am I? Oh, if my test for unintended consequences is what the government allows the corporation to tell me, the government, I'm not going to see them, are they? So you have to, if you start looking at what I've done today, you start pulling together now the knowledge over time that's exposed through other people's conditions, and you wrap them together in different subject matter areas to show that in no area is protected against these in, these problems. You can start moving, I think, today to start to assert against, in a, an administrative fashion, as a, even just a letter of, of objection. You can start pulling together the failures of the past have led to the harms that we see now, which cannot be any different in the future. If we continue to allow the myopic view, the statement from the profiteer, the uh, the, the 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 deaf, we don't we become deaf to the very thing the scientists today are now complaining that the scientists today have not told the FDA the 
unintended consequences that they're afraid the little girls may have suffered, the pigs that suffered, are in your food already. And no one's taken a look at that. And where you're supposed to, where you're blind to something and you're required to take a hard look, you failed before we got going. Okay, I just laid out a little bit of a discussion for anybody who wants to pick that up and apply it to any other thing. It, until we start to talk this way and address the things this way, uh, like I told, like I said, Catherine off Austin Fitz, until these people who see this problem, you're not wanting it's not enough. Until you see the method and application and counter that, the, the agenda rolls over all. So in this story, big tongues and extra vertebrae. I didn't even know about this stuff, but here it is. I, I didn't know, I mean, the existence. I knew that it was possible because it, it's just not, it's not not possible. Now we have a study here that explains this problem all based on what? We reached the, we went past what I told you the bioethicist would be adjusting and agreeing to as they went along. People went past when they jumped into, into, into trying to modify a be, human beings, they call them. Little animals. That, that shocked everybody. There's a, this moral super injunction on our consciousness. So I want to drop that back to the other other super injunction, the global order. See, there's an underlying thing in there that does control this world on a global scale. And until we kind of address that in us, this stuff's going to continue. We're going to allow all this. But this is the proof, if you needed anything before, more proof in the new about what the problems are as spoken by the experts. The people in the field are now telling you, now explaining what they're seeing in the labs that they aren't telling you anywhere else, that a company will never tell you. These are the, supposedly the scientists doing the studies, not the companies utilizing the byproducts to go do it. Like when we finally found out that uh, what, the human fetal tissue is used as a flavor enhancement for what, Pepsis? Yeah, see how that works, folks? They just don't tell us, and we don't really pay attention. Big tongues and extra vertebrae and these CRISPR, uh, these cri what happens to the plants that they put? What happens to the viruses and the, and the bacteria that they put in to make fabricate uh, byproducts th in things? In some regard, I can't. I don't have a problem with a biologically gen genetically modified organism that creates a, a chemical somehow. You know, like alcohol. I just don't have a problem somehow with that. The problem I have with that is the biological escape. That's the problem I have with that. But but if it's if it's just an inert chemical, if you will, not inert, but if it's just a chemical, somehow I don't have a problem with that. That's a lot more acceptable to me. I haven't looked at any closer than that part because I haven't had to. My concern is the stuff I consume or that people consume or that we allow in our society that gets into the into our into us by whatever mechanism. We're hearing the dis we're hearing the unintended consequences I told you about were there years and years ago. We're finally, it took all these years to get the evidence, and what happened is that we violated even the people that are doing it. They, they, they violated themselves. And so I'm saying, here's the evidence, folks. Bring it up, those of you that are interested, because gene-edited food is coming soon to supermarket shelves. If What are we going to do? Have broccoli with a third spine or something, or uh, tongues coming out of what? What do, we, what do we expect it? But here, the problem with the food that we're going to be eating, like vegetables, we're not going to know about the mutations. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. I hope something I said today, folks, will give you something insight, some way to approach this thing, get, get yourself active in the things that we need to fix. Uh, like, share, send out, spread around. Spread the word, folks. Appreciate that. I'll be here next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 